Senator Pia Quetano is recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, I rise on a matter of personal and collective privilege. March 3 is the anniversary of the Rare Disease Act, which this representation principally authored and sponsored. Presidential Proclamation 1989, Series of 2010, established the fourth week of every February as National Rare Disease Week. The last day of February of every year is Rare Disease Day. What is, the, what is a rare disease? The WHO defines a rare disease as an often debilitating disease or condition with a prevalence of 0.65% to 1%. Our law, the Rare Disease Act of the Philippines, defines refers to it as disorders such as inherited metabolic disorders and other diseases with similar rare occurrences as recognized by the DOH upon recommendation by the NIH, but excluding catastrophic, uh, like life-threatening, serious debilitating, or serious and chronic forms of more frequent occurring diseases. So in layman's term, Mr. President, rare nga siya, bibihira siya, kokonti lang ang may ganyang sakit. And what happens is there is also very little research uh, that allows them to find life-saving uh, interventions, whether the interventions would be food, kasi minsan it's just food, uh, medicines, or other kinds of treatment, there are not enough pharmaceuticals or even um, other entities that invest in finding solutions for those who have rare diseases. As of 2020, 2023, the Philippines has identified 156 conditions, uh, or one in every 20,000 individuals. I actually authored this act, Mr. President. Uh, it's a 2016 act, but again, um, our honorary Dr. Um, Padilla is really the brainchild behind this. It is very technical, so she was the one who worked on this so that we would have a law that aims to improve the availability of comprehensive medical care for patients diagnosed with rare diseases. I would like to mention, Mr. President, that um, we have with us a few of, of uh, patients of Dr. Padilla. But before I go there, um, let, me, let me ask that a video be played. It's a very short video um, of Juan Magdaraog, who is actually with us, to just say a few words about his condition. I was able to officially diagnose when I was 16 years old that we were able to go to San Francisco and then we found out that it's another disease that's called form based despite having a rare disease given the right opportunities and the right support. I was able to finish my school work, be a productive member of the fight. Uh, we need the right support from government and the community to give us a chance. It doesn't mean that if you have a rare disease that you can't make a difference and you only go until you, you try and until you do your best. Yes, Mr. President, um, that is uh, Decoy, who is is he here now? That's Decoy over there. Um, as described by Dr. Padilla, he's practically paralyzed all over, practically because obviously he can speak, so he can use his, uh, he can use that function, a little bit of movement on his fingers, but despite that, he is a productive member of society, contributing to GDP and our economy. Uh, dear colleagues, you will be able to taste his culinary efforts because I, I regularly purchase uh, his uh, cuisine, which is chicken pie, key lime pie. It's my favorite. And uh, I encourage all of you to try it because I need not sales talk this. Masarap talaga. 
despite and in, and in addition to that, Senator JV, uh, I want him to know that he is also a seller of collectible watches. As to why I'm mentioning it to you, wala lang, baka gusto mong bumili ng relo. And then um, he is also a digital expert giving advice and consultancy uh, on, on in the digital realm. So if you have projects. And this is just decoy, Mr. President. No, um, I know that he, his mom, who is there, Cynthia, um, she's very active. Please stand. Um, she has been a, a uh, partner of Dr. Padilla, reaching out to other parents and helping them uh, have the courage to seek the kind of support that they need for their children. And it's because of this um, uh, whole of society approach, government, because of our chairman, uh, Senator Sunny Angara, were able to put budget for uh, the Rare Disease Act implementation. And on that note, also the newborn screening. No, this is, this is for rare disease, but the newborn screening. <laughs> Uh, in a way um, has some similarities in the sense that if you can diagnose, then you can treat ideally. Not all rare diseases have treatment. Um, along with decoy here are just a few other uh, patients, just so for us to see, you know, to see the faces to these um, people who deal with this day to day. So may I ask, may I call on Zia Nicole? Um, who's Zia? I am. This is Zia. She has a metabolic condition leading to motor and cognitive delays. Um, it is a six pyro pyrovoil tetrahydropyrin synthase six PTPS deficiency. And there is Janelle, uh, who is ten year old girl from Laguna with with phenyketonuria PKU that leads to developmental delays and behavioral problems. And then there's Sean Liam, who is the younger sibling of Janelle and is currently three years old. He also has PKU. And there's Louise Franzine, who has maple syrup urine disease. Um, but because of its proper management, she is now normal condition. And uh, she delivered, uh, that's her, that's her. So she has already delivered her own baby and the baby does not have this condition. So there are happy stories despite the, the sad stories and uh, we, we were happy that they are happy to share their story with us. Very quickly, Mr. President, um, my son Gabriel had a rare disease. I actually did not know until years after he died that his condition is considered a rare disease. All I know during the time na wala pang internet, uh, upon, um, during a, uh, what do you call this, a routine checkup with my ob she told me that I wasn't gaining enough weight. And so at that time, it wasn't really routine to have an ultrasound, so she asked that I get an ultrasound, and that's where it revealed that my unborn child had a um, cleft lip and uh, tumors in his kidney. That's what was shown in the ultrasound. And that was the beginning of many tests, etc. And I had to go to the US to have an amniocentesis because they don't do it here. Do they still not do it here? So I don't know, that, that's, a, that's an issue I leave to the experts because being able to have that amniocentesis prepared me for the reality of what I was going to face. So um, my son was born in December, on December 4, 2000, 2000, and he lived for nine months. And the early diagnosis helped prepare me emotionally and mentally for this condition. So that's something I think we should look into. Anyway, I never knew that that was called a rare disease until years later when we were talking and I said, is my son's condition, which is called trisomy 13, a rare disease? And Dr. Padilla said, yes, it's considered a rare disease. So I didn't even know at the time I was pushing for this bill that um, it's something that I personally had experienced. Anyway, Mr. President, um, this is all tied up to SDG3 on good health and well-being, 
which uh, no less than the WHO Director General says, the vision of the Sustainable Development Goals is a world in which no one is left behind. And that includes people who suffer from rare diseases. So on that note, I thank uh, our colleagues for, for the time to take a look at this issue. And even just having them here, we already got so much input and support on the need to provide more financial support, on the need also to help the community who are thriving to be productive members of our society. So thank you so much for the time uh, that you have, you have given the Senate to understand this issue better. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you very much, distinguished colleague. Thank you, Mr. President. Before I uh, refer this, uh, the, the privileged speech of our dear colleague, may I just put into the records that uh, I, I sincerely understand and uh, uh, commiserate with our dear colleague and uh, also wanted to state for the record that if there's anything, really, what uh, anything we can do, Mr. President, in order to help our uh, kababayans, especially our uh, children, our young people, whom we believe is actually uh, the hope of our nation. We are actually ready to even walk the extra mile, Mr. President. And uh, Senator Skoko and I are talking about as to how we can improve ourselves as senators, not just as fathers or individuals, but as senators on how we'll be able to help out and understand uh, the real issue at hand, Mr. President. So we thank our dear colleague, Senator uh, Pia Keira. Mr. Mr. President, Senator uh, Risa Ontiveros is also uh, seeking the floor. Yes. I move that she be recognized, Mr. Senator President. Senator Risa Ontiveros is recognized. Salamat kaya, Mr. President. Uh, briefly, I would just like to share a word of solidarity uh, with my sister, Senator Pia. Uh, tuwing ikinikwento mo yung uh, yung bahagi yun ng kwentong buhay mo tungkol sa anak mong si Gabriel. Well, uh, I'm sure hindi lang ako yung naluluha dito sa mga kasama. I just want to thank you for sharing the story again uh, in aid of supporting other families to help and love and serve their children uh, uh, better and better over time. Uh, nagpapasalamat din ako, Mr. President, uh, kay Dr. Carmencita Padilla, whom the gentle lady from Tagigan Pateros has led us in honoring for her life's work uh, with these families uh, to walk the extra mile that the majority leader mentioned uh, out of sheer love, unconditional love for their children. At marami salamat sa mga pamilya who are here today, not only for themselves, but for other families and other children, uh, gifts to our society, and for continuing to teach us in the Senate how we can support them to also achieve their full potential as human beings uh, and as Filipinos. Um, Huli, uh, Mr. President, uh, napagtulungan na rin po namin ni Minority Leader Senator Coco Pimentel yung ilang mga panukalang batas natin dito sa Senado together with persons with disabilities and their families. And uh, I'm sure Senator Pia is uh, well aware of these also, but we, I know, Mr. President, we will continue to devo devote our energies para isulong yung mga ito, yung tungkol sa National Action Plan for persons with disabilities and their families, at yung panukala din tungkol sa uh, disability support fund. So just uh, deep thanks all around uh, to uh, the people who have made today so special for the Senate. Salamat kaayo, Mr. President. Thank you very much. Thanks Thank you. Time. Mr. President, with that, I move the... Oh, Mr. President, our minority leader, Senator Coco Pimentel, is also seeking the floor. The I hope that he be recognized, Mr. President. Senator Coco Pimentel is recognized. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. Uh, with the permission of our colleague, I said that if she could uh, give us more specifics as to this uh, subject matter uh, of her privileged speech, Mr. Mr. President. With the permission of our colleague. Uh, may I proceed, ma'am? Ma yes, of course. Okay. Yes, of course. Uh, Senator Pia Caetano mentioned the law which she authored. No? So I forgot the number, but there is a law. May we know the title, the, the title of the law? Rare Diseases Act of 2016. Okay. So we already have the law, the Rare Diseases yeah. Act. The and then uh, may we know what, what are the salient points uh, 
of the law, Mr. President. Yes, Mr. President. Um, what's very important here in the law is that we, well, of course, we rec it may go without saying, but we do recognize them as persons with disabilities with all the benefits that fall under the definition of persons with disabilities, which is covered by a separate law. And then um, it requires the different government agencies to provide support. There's DSWD that is mentioned. Even Dole, and I know the line of questioning of uh, the minority floor leader will lead to that. So, anong ginagawa nito mga to? Uh, Senator Joel's favorite agency. I can see the big smile on his face. Let it be put on record. The Dole is actually required to adapt programs that promote the availability of opportunities for work and employment of abled, abled persons with rare diseases. Um, in addition to that, Mr. President, um, well, there is the technical side of the work that's, that must be done by DOH, which is DOH. Uh, perennially updating this list of uh, persons with rare diseases. This may also be an opportunity to say that we are, um, Dr. Padilla, sadly, no, very reliant on international standards no, in determining also this, discovering and determining what are these rare diseases. So it would be very nice. I don't even know if there are other Asian counterparts um, to the work we're doing, but um, if there's anything that we can do, including more research, because really there's re re really a lack of research on um, what are the solutions and the interventions that can be done for <laughs> many of these patients. But a lot of, we have enough, um, well, our doctor para sabayan, if I may uh, mention, of course, contributes to that. Um, it's up, up to Dr. the likes of Dr. Pedilla to recruit them <laughs> into their work. But one of the important things, and I'll, I'll just add newborn screening as well, is also to identify and to recognize these, Ill, these, these conditions early on. Because ano naman maitutulong natin kung hindi? And, and if we will only rely on geneticists, like Dr. Padilla, konti lang kayo. I, I don't know how many geneticists do we even have in the country? 20. We have 20 geneticists in the country. So, but, but what they have done is that they've created programs so that the various clinics that we have empowered have the ability to um, address those conditions. I'll, I'll read it into the record if that's okay with the minority floor leader. So, um, under the law, um, patients highly suspected of or diagnosed with a rare disease shall be referred to a newborn screening continuity clinic to ensure the early detection of that rare disease. So tied, tied up talaga yung rare disease and the newborn screening act. And then the DOH with the assistance of NIH, NIH shall develop a system to train a sufficient number of medical specialists to diagnose and manage persons with rare diseases. So, yeah. po. so I think uh, I thank this, the, uh, this, our colleague for uh, pointing out the salient, the salient features of the law. Siguro, when the committee uh, to which this speech will will be referred will will conduct the hearing, Mr. President, parang we we uh, we perform our oversight function and find out how the law is being uh, implemented. So, pero. Yung mga, meron po tayong mga pasyente po rito or mga uh, persons uh, with, with rare diseases. Uh, with rare diseases. Oh. So, they're, they're young, huh? mga bata. So, of course, yung families nila, the, the parents or the guardians, uh, what government agency can they approach uh, for, number one, guidance, number two, uh, possible uh, assistance, uh, Mr. President? So, Mr. President, um, in 2022, I'll, I'll give you a very specific answer. In 2022, uh, we, we funded um, the establishment of 66 clinics all over the country to provide lifetime support for patients diagnosed with rare diseases um, after the newborn screening. So the Newborn Screening Act is already happening all over the country, right, through, through various um, hospitals. Yeah. And these 66 clinics are important to make sure that after my diagnosis, may continuing care. But this is an ongoing, this cannot be a one-time funding, Mr. President. So um, 
in 2023, we added uh, support for the operations because it's established, na, mm -hmm. and this was 28 million. And then in 2024, we had capital outlay for the continuity and satellite clinics across the country, only 5 million, Mr. President. I have to add, uh, I've, uh, having been a senator for almost, uh, well, senator in three years in, in the House, so almost 20 years altogether, I have had the experience of working with secretaries who were not very keen on funding. And for me, my position has always been, Ponduhan kahit papano, diba? Let's move it forward. I understand that this is these are rare diseases. If you're going to try to figure out how many children, how many families are affected, maybe it's not as many as those with cancer. But we still have to fund. They're still human beings. They're still Filipinos. So yun lang sa akin, kasi kung tuloy tuloy pa konti konti, marami tayong achieve, Mr. President. So and the funding for. The Rare Diseases Act, although the, the law calls for national government agencies to provide su support, but the main agency responsible for the implementation of the act would be the DOH. Uh, is that correct, Mr. President? DOH? So, so DOH and UPNIH, because like ito pong um, establishment of clinics, uh, the system that was going to be put in place was... Dr. Padilla's program UP, and NIH, having been... Institute for Health. DOH ang main, okay. but NIH assist. Yeah. Okay. DOH yes, so, ang main so, and NIH okay. assist. So at least, nakikita na po natin na, you know, if uh, uh, a legislator wants to direct funding to help the uh, execution or implementation of the Rare Diseases Act, you direct your funding to... DOH. DOH and to you. P NIH. The NIH, which is under the UP system budget. Yes, yes, Mr. Yes. President, and that is the, correct. And then what particular program po under the DOH, if they're just in case uh, our uh, a colleague budget. knows? Uh, the rare diseases, the fringes say rare diseases as the budget. Um, for implementation of the Rare Disease Act, okay na po yon, Mr. President, under the general DOH budget. They will put that for the implementation because we already have funding there, the establishment of the clinic, support for operations, so we just... Sige, I, I thought maybe may, may specific, specific, yeah, like may a, specific a division. Pop, pop, I think that's uh, still a dream of... Um, it's, still, it's still a dream so, of uh, uh, Dr. Padilla to have a center. So if walang, walang specific na PAP, di ba? PAP yan, uh, mm. Program Activity Project, Ibig sabihin noon nakalodge lang yan sa secretary, secretary and then we no? lobby yeah. we lobby yes. for we lobby yes. for the exercise of discretion yes. of the secretary so But I have to say uh, Mr. President that's that probably why Dr. Padilla received the National Scientist Award not just for her for her um, intelligence no and her her titles but she's very diligent in in making her projects become a reality grabe tumutok yan so pag yan nalagay diyan hindi yan papayag na hindi magamit for the purpose it is intended Sige po, Mr. President, I think we, we already got uh, sufficient details from our uh, speaker, Mr. President. Thank Siguro you. ang pagmahir na po ito ng committee, uh, I, I just uh, siguro call for the exercise of our oversight function. Bali, audit audit natin ang implementation of RA 10747, which is the Rare Diseases Act. So, yes, I think Mr. President, I look forward to that um, uh, opportunity, uh, as His Honor said. No, we, let's do an audit. Thank you. Salamat po, Mr. President. Thank you to our Thank, Thank you very much, distinguished colleagues. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. President, with that, I move that we refer the privileged speech of Senator Pia Cayetano and all the interpolations and manifestations thereon to the Committee on Health and Demography. I so move, Mr. President. There being no objection, motion is approved. Thank you.